And sex workers are up in arms in Canada. A new law criminalizes buying and selling sex in the country. It would also prohibit sex workers from advertising their services and make it illegal to sell sexual services in public spaces where kids could be present. Now, the old sex laws were struck down by the Supreme Court in December of last year, and lawmakers uh, gave it a year to come up with new legislation. So here to talk more about the world's oldest profession and how whether it will continue in Canada or not, I'm joined by Katrina Pace, litigation director at Pivot Legal Society. Hello, Katrina. Now, Good afternoon. If the Supreme Court in Canada has previously ruled that these laws prohibiting brothels in public or public communication for the purpose of prostitution and those uh, living on the profits of prostitution, uh, they ruled that unconstitutional, then why are we now seeing the newer legislation attempting to prohibit it? Well, the government, the federal government in Canada has tried to find creative ways to get around the decision of the Supreme Court of Canada, um, which did strike down those laws. And they've tried to reenact or create new criminal laws that will continue to criminalize adult prostitution in Canada, uh, but in ways that look different from the laws that were struck down. So they're trying to continue with the approach of overall criminalization, but to do so in a slightly different way. Um, but what we know is that the harms that are created will be the same. Well, the, the sex workers are obviously upset about this new law, saying it'll make working uh, in the sex industry more dangerous. Can you tell us uh, how so? Well, the um, provisions, the new proposed provisions, do things like um, say it's illegal to communicate in public for the purpose of prostitution. Um, they try to make it a little bit more limited than it was before, but still will have the effect of driving street sex workers into the most dangerous parts of our cities, into really isolated areas where there's no one there to help them if they need support, where they have to get into vehicles very quickly to try to stay away from and avoid police detection. Um, and then a number of other provisions, like making it illegal to be a client of a sex worker, making it illegal to buy sex, or making it illegal to advertise, make it virtually impossible to work indoors, which the Supreme Court of Canada said really is the safest way for sex work to happen. Uh, so this is the government's attempt to sort of try to stop prostitution from happening, but we know it will have all of these various harms, um, making sex workers have very little control over the conditions of their work. Right, and speaking of control and keeping uh, the industry indoors, actually, historically Canada has kept prostitution legal and and one must get even a business license, essentially, right, to practice. Um, and so as a result, Canada's had, I believe, a lower incidence rate of diseases and violent crimes against the people within the sex industry. So wouldn't criminalizing prostitution not only clog up the judicial system, but like you said, just put these people in harm's way? Yeah, you know, you raised some really interesting points. One is that prostitution itself, the exchange has never been illegal in Canada, um, but all of these various other activities have been. Um, but what we have seen is the most, sort of the bulk of enforcement has been targeted at street-based workers. Um, in fact, 95% of law enforcement is targeted at those women, and they, of course, have experienced the most unbelievable violence. Um, we've had a, an incredible tragedy of missing and murdered women in, in Vancouver, especially, um, that really shows how criminalization makes their conditions very, very vulnerable. Um, but what you raise is an interesting question about the fact that there's this licensing scheme at the same time where we know many cities and, and, and municipalities across the country do license um, sex industry businesses. So even though we've had these criminal laws that say brothels were illegal, uh, nevertheless, we have municipalities granting licenses. So it's a very messy system. Um, and what we know is that from a human rights perspective and from a safety perspective and based on the evidence from Canada and all over the world, um, it's really time to move away from criminalization and recognize that the health and safety of sex workers must come first. Right. And for example, in Edmonton, um, the licensing of these businesses have generated more than, I believe, a, a quarter million dollars for that city alone. Um, what would the financial repercussions be of, of criminalizing prostitution? Well, I mean, the, it's an interesting question because I don't know how cities are going to respond to the new federal legislation uh, because they were, as kind of I just mentioned, licensing these businesses that were sort of fundamentally illegal, um, but they were licensing them as things like massage parlors or they were calling them health enhancement centers. So it was a different framing of what was going on there, but nevertheless, I think everyone knew the business that was taking place. So I don't know if the cities will stop licensing these businesses um, or license them less 
than they have been before. But I think you're right to say that this has been very lucrative for cities um, across the country, um, and it would right. be a really substantial hit if they're not licensing those businesses. And it would be a huge hit, of course, for sex workers who um, want to be able to work indoors in order to ensure their own safety. That's right. Well, thank you so much for your time. That was Katrina Pacey, Litigation Director at Pivot Legal Society. Thank you.